to another video. Today I'm going to be talking you through how I drafted and made this three-quarter circle skirt. Now, this, <laughs> this took me way longer to work out than it probably should have done and there are a couple of calculators that will do all the hard work for you. However, I couldn't work out from the mood calculator if they had included wearing ease and if they had included seam allowance because I couldn't see it anywhere on the app and then with the Omni skirt calculator same thing I knew that they hadn't included wearing ease but I couldn't work out their two centimeter seam allowance whether it was added or not yeah it confused me so the way I figured it out was using the Omni circumference calculator and I wanted to find what the circumference of a circle would be with three quarters of that circle adding up to my waist measurement which was 28 inches so I basically divided my waist by three because it's one two three pieces that I needed times that by four because I needed to draft for a full circle so that's one two three four and then basically just used three of those panels to make this circle skirt and it worked it worked so I'm going to show you in this tutorial how I did all of that and then how I put the skirt together as well. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is draw yourself a perpendicular line to the straight edge of your paper and I have my straight edge running down here. So I'm going to use my ruler just to draw a straight edge on the paper. The next part is actually a little bit mind bendy, but I think I've worked it out for you. The first thing you want to do is take your natural waist measurement, which mine is 27 inches and I've included one inch of wearing ease, so I have a measurement of 28. Now I'm going to use the fraction calculator and a lot of you have been asking what it's called and it's just fraction calculator. It's free. I just downloaded it from the app store. So I've got 28 inches, but I want a three quarter circle skirt. So I need to work out a circumference of a full circle skirt, which 28 inches is three quarters of that. So my way of doing this is 28 inches divided by three equals nine and one third. I then want to times that by four because that will, and that will give me a 37 inches and a third. Now, so the, the way that I'm working this out is, so we've got a full circle there and I just want three quarters of it. And I want that three quarters circumference to measure 28 inches. So I've divided my 28 by three, which has given me nine and a third. So that's what each one of those is. And because it's very much easier to draft a circle than it is to draft a three quarter circle, believe me, I have tried. There are apps out there that will generate a three quarter circle skirt for you. Mood being one of them, Omni being another one. But Omni are not overly clear about the seam allowance that they've included and Mood haven't included any notes about their seam allowances at all. So I've decided to go for this method. I've got my 28 inch waist divided by three because I want three quarters of this circle and that's nine and a third. So uh, this that's what each of these pieces measures. I need to know what the full circumference of a skirt with a three quarters of it being 28 inches. So I divided my 28 by three times the, the, the answer, which is 9.3 by four, which gives me 37 and a third. So once I've got that measurement, I'm then going to go into the Omni calculator for circle, for circumference calculator. So we know that the circumference of our waist for a full circle, which includes a 28 inch, three quarters of that being 28 inches, is 37 and one third inches. So 37.3. So that gives me a radius of 5.9 and the radius is this measurement here which is what we want so that now that now that I have the 5.9 I'm going to mark on from the angle the 90 degree angle I have here a couple of 5.9 marks I'm then going to take 
my compass that I was very kindly gifted. And I'm going to set that to... Just about measure it goes up to six inches. Yep, there we go. So you want the point of your compass on the very point of the right angle. And it's easier said than done. That's not quite wide enough. Right, I've basically drafted a quarter of a circle here and this has no seam allowance added onto it. So I'm going to add the length to this that I want. So I want my skirt to be 28 inches, so I'm measuring from where the circumference of the waist starts from 28 inches down. Okay, so I'm going to use my pencil and string method again because unfortunately the compass only opens up to a six inch radius which is not going to cut it for this. So you want to have the string as close to the lead of the pencil as possible, pull the string taut, put pressure on the 90 degree angle and I've made marks around so I kind of know that I'm hitting in the right place. So we need to add seam allowance to that edge and that edge. And I'm going to go 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I also need to add seam allowance to this area here. And I'm going to go and get my French curve to do that. Okay, so I've got 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance added there, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance added there. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the halfway point. So uh, we want 9 and a third divided by 2, that equals 4 and 2 thirds. So. Measured that on with my soft tape measure. Now I'm going to put from my 90 degree angle through that mark I've just made, draw a line down to the hem. There we go. Added on five eighths of an inch seam allowance to both sides now, so I'm going to cut this bit off and then I am going to write on here what it is, and that I will need to cut three. Right, so I'm just gonna chop this off, and that's how to draft a three quarter circle skirt. <laughs> it took me a while to get there, but I'm happy that this one will actually fit me once I make it up. Once you've drafted the skirt panels, you're going to then need to draft a waistband for it. Now, I have done tutorials for how to draft a straight waistband and how to draft a curved waistband. So I'm not going to show you how I do that in here. I will, however, give you links to those tutorials here and also in the description box down below. Okay, so once you have drafted your pattern, you're going to need to cut out three of these panels. And I'm actually using this center line that I drew as also my grain line. When I was cutting my skirt panels out, I also cut two of my curved waistbands out and interfacing, because I'm going to interface one of these. So there is a tutorial, which I will link up here for you, of how to draft your very own curved waistband. This pattern is also particularly good for directional prints, which is the type of print that I am using underneath all of this. So I'm going to unpin everything and then I'm going to bind all of the edges with bias binding. So I'm going to be finishing the edges of my skirt, all of them with bias binding, because this is quite a thick material and with thicker materials, you don't really want to do French seams because you don't want to add too much bulk in particular areas. And I think the inside's going to look really nice with bias binding on it. 
this fabric, if I can... Ugh show you the print we'll get there eventually it does have some purple in it and i think that's going to look really nice i mean you could just do black you could do pink you could do orange yellow um, but i just particularly like purple and also i accidentally ordered a, another roll of purple because i thought i had this one out in my thingy here and I was like, oh no, I need to order some more purple, forgetting that I'd already ordered another roll of it. So I now have two full rolls of purple. So yes, let's let's use up the purple. I'm using pre-bought bias binding that I get by the roll. And I will link my supplier for this in the description bar down below. So the first thing, uh, this, this is actually off the end of the old roll. So that's all that's left. But I usually, what I would do is I would work from the roll pin the bias binding on and keep the roll in my keep the roll down in my lap so that when I'm sewing I just use as much as I need and then I can trim it off so the very first thing that you want to do is you want to pin the right side of the bias binding so the bit that's got no uh, none of the raw edges visible to the wrong side of the edge that you want to bind and you want to make sure that the raw edges are meeting so you're going to be sewing in this fold created here and some people do like to press the fold flat first and because they, they find that easier personally i don't some people also like to pin the entire way down because they find that easier and again personally i don't so I pin the beginning because I want to make sure that everything lines up and this stuff is kind of slippery. So I'm going to sink my needle into the uh, fold there, the, the line of the crease, and just sew the whole way down. I'm going to back stitch at the start and at the finish. Okay, so when you're finished, you should end up with something that looks like this. So you have a line of stitching in that crease. You have the raw edges of the bias binding end of your garment matching up. And so the next thing that we need to do is wrap it around to the right side. So you're going to fold it over so that you have half the bias binding on the back and then half the bias binding on the front. You should just cover this line of stitching that you've done there and then we're going to sew this and I like to use my blind hem foot because it has a guide that I can run up against the edge of the binding if I move my needle over to the left that means that I'm going to ensure that I'm catching all the binding and sewing it down and it also means because I have a straight edge to run across it I have I will get a straight line of stitching as I say this is a blind hem foot but you can get an edge stitch foot which has this same guide and that you can move your needle to the right or to the left I find that because I have a very large throat space on my sewing machine this 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 works really well for me okay again this is totally down to personal preference but I don't pin my bias binding down when I'm sewing it down onto the right side or top stitching it down I with my right hand I push the fabric flat and then with my left hand I push the binding flat and I make sure that and I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder and the camera is totally in way of the actual needle so fingers crossed this is doing what it should but yeah so you push with my right right finger I push the fabric down and with my left finger I push the binding down and then as you can see I'm running this guide along this edge which is hopefully giving me a nice straight line it's covering that previous line of stitching and as I say because I have a large throat space on my machine the fact that the work is then on this side isn't a problem for me and with smaller items like this it should be fine but you may wish to get yourself a top an edge stitching foot so that you could have the work this side of the machine as is normal but this is just sort of like a way that I've kind of used over the years of all the bias binding and it works for me so I'm going to sew right down and finish all this off not the easiest thing to do with a camera in the way Stitch at the end. 
Okay, so this does need to be now be pressed and one thing to bear in mind when you're pressing this is that it is polyester so you want to make sure that your iron is not too hot and you don't burn it ask me how i know once it's pressed you've got a lovely bias band edge that you can then seam together with your other pattern pieces something to bear in mind is that i am working with five eighths of an inch seam allowance on this pattern and my binding is coming out to three eighths of an inch once it's finished so if you have a, seam, a pattern with a smaller seam allowance you would need to bear that in mind and have a look at the width of your binding and how big the finished edge ends up being because with a seam allowance of one centimeter or three eighths of an inch this would then be in the way of actually this would be on the stitching line and it would be in the way but my seam allowance is five eighths of an inch so I have plenty of room there so if one of the things you can do is get narrower bias binding you can make your own bias binding of which there are many tutorials of that on uh, YouTube and or you can increase the seam allowance on the pattern that you're using if it is smaller than you, your, your binding needs it to be. Once you have all of your seams bound and pressed you're then going to want to sew the side all the seams together so we have three panels so you're going to see, need to sew all three panels together and leave the back edges open to put the zip in. So I've pinned my panels together, right sides together. This is what you should end up with it looking like. So we've got panel one, panel two and panel three and we're going to sew those two seams at five eighths of an inch with the right sides together. Once you've sewn your panels together you then want to press your seams open and then the next thing we're going to do is attach the waistband to the skirt. So I'm using a curved waistband with this one. So the edge that we want to attach to the skirt is the greater or longer edge. We want the shorter edge to be the waistband. So the way I like to do it is I find the middle of the centre panel and the middle of the waistband and then I'm going to pin those together, right sides together. I then pin the edges and then I'm filling all the pins all the way along just making sure that we get no tucks or puckers because you don't want those. Okay so everything is pinned on. Now you want to sew with the waistband down because that's the flat piece and the skirt side up because you want to make sure that none of these little bumps turn into tucks. So you're going to take it really slowly, sew along there at 5 eighths of an inch and then when we're done we're going to press everything up towards the waistband. Okay, so the waistband is sewn to the skirt and as I said, I've pressed everything up into the waistband area. So the next thing that we want to do is attach our zip. I've got my invisible zip here. I tend to use longer invisible zips on skirts because I have quite large hips in comparison to my waist and I find if I use a smaller sort of 9 inch zip or 10 inch zip then I find it very difficult to get the skirt on and off over my hips. I have to put it over my head so I tend to use longer zips. So the first thing that we want to do is open our invisible zip up. So I've opened up my invisible zip and we're going to take the right side of the zip, so the bit where you can't see the teeth, and we're going to place that to the right side of the skirt. You want to have the teeth of the zip 5 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge of the skirt and you want to have the top of the zipper tape right flush up against the top of the waistband. So we're going to pin this in place and then we're going to sew the zip into place so we've got the teeth this side and we've got the edge of the zip on the inside edge of the skirt and we're going to sew it in place all the way down and to do that I'm going to use my visible zipper foot and as you can see there it has two little grooves in it and when you put this on it the teeth the teeth from the zip will sit inside the groove and when you pull it along it rolls it to the outside so that you can stitch in really close to the zipper teeth which is what you want and which is what will make your zip invisible. You don't want to stitch too close because you want your zip to still be usable but you want to stitch close enough that your, sti your zipper will then be invisible when you have it installed. So I'm going to do the, uh, as you're looking at the skirt from behind if someone was wearing it, I'm going to do the left hand side first. So I have my invisible zip foot on and I can actually move my needle so I'm going to move it over to the left just slightly so that it will again help get in nice and close to the zipper teeth when I'm sewing this on. So I've sewn the first part of my zip in and I've zipped it up and it zips up with ease which is something that we want. Now the next thing that we want to do is make a mark on our zipper tape where the waistband is because that will help us get the waistband to meet up nicely when we install the other side. So that's the next thing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to unzip 
my zip. <laughs> All the way down to the bottom. Now, so um, I've backstitched at the beginning and the end of the zip as well, and I've gotten as close as I can to the zipper pull, but it's, you know, as you can see, it's quite a way away, but with a zipper foot as well, and then this in the way. That's as close as I could get before I could backstitch. So we want to, that's the zip un, unzipped. So we've got the right side of the zip with the, the teeth not visible. We want to turn that over and again, do the same thing. We want to line up the top of the tape with the top of the waistband. You want it f the zip to be 5 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge. And the other mark that you need to mark, make sure that you're hitting is where you've put in, where the waistband is on this side. So I'm going to pin this in place. That was my elbow. I'm going to pin that in place and then I'm going to sew it. And so I've still got my invisible zipper foot on. This time I'm gonna move my needle over to the right so that again, it's it's helping to sew nice and close in there and the the, the foot will roll the teeth out of the way but not too close that the zip is then in, not usable. Once you have sewn that zip in, it's the moment of truth. So you wanna zip it up and see if it all zips up. And if everything meets up nicely. Now, that's out by about a millimetre. And I'm going to call that a win. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not unpicking that to, uh, to redo that. It's, it's out by, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that match there. It's a busy print as well, and again, if anyone's really getting close enough to look at this particular part of your skirt, they are far too close. So, uh, yes. Right, so the next thing that we want to do, now this, oh, this zip is a little bit stiff. I'm going to run some candle wax along it. This, yeah, here we go. So the next thing that we want to do is sew on our waistband facing. Now... I'm using, it's not a thick fabric, but it's, it's also not a thin fabric. It's got quite a lot of body to this. So they, I've actually bound the lower edge of my waistband uh, with bias binding and using exactly the same method that I used for these raw edges here. So it's exactly the same method. Sew it onto the wrong side first, wrap it around, top stitch it down and press. So we want to attach this waistband facing to the waistband and the important thing to note here is again you're going to match up the center match up the edges and then pin all the way along and we're going to sew at five eighths of an inch and we are going to the zip tape is going to be encased between the two layers of the waistband and we're going to sew over that so I'm going to pin mine in place and then sew it at five eighths of an inch the waistband facing lining inner piece is sewn on, so we now need to press everything up into the facing because we're going to understitch along here to make sure that the, fa the facing stays inside of the skirt. So I'm going to press everything up and then understitch. So this is the interfaced waistband, this is the facing, and I have understitched, which is basically stitching all of the seam allowance up to the facing so that when you press it, which I have, it all rolls to the inside. So this is the outer waistband that you can just see there. So the next thing we need to do is finish off these edges. So this is obviously the skirt, the waistband and the waistband facing. Now you wanna take the right side of the waistband facing and get it right sides to the waistband. And you wanna roll it over so that you can see both lines of stitching, so the, the understitching and the actual seaming of the facing to the waistband. And then you're going to pin that in place and with your regular zipper foot you're going to run a line of stitching down here. And it is actually easier to do it when you can see where the, the zip is, is sewn in. But you're going to run a line of stitching and you don't want it to be right up against this one because you want to have all the bulk free from the zip so that the zipper pull can go right to the top and zip and unzip. So we're going to run a line of stitching 
all the way along here and with this foot it just means that we can get close to the zip but not um, have that in the way so I'm going to pin this down and I'm going to sew sew it down and I will show you when I'm done okay so I have sewn there we go you can see it better from this side I have sewn the facing down and I am probably three eighths of an inch away from the line of stitching so before you trim anything turn it through and make sure that everything is sitting where you want it to and I can't turn mine through anymore because it is very very bulky uh, but I haven't trimmed anything yet but that is all good so we want to trim off the bulk from there and I'm going to trim off a little bit more from there and then clip my threads and you want to double check before you start clipping because if you need to unpick and re-sew things trying to do it with a reduced seam allowance is very very difficult so let's pull this through and we should be able to get it to sit a bit nicer this time because there is no bulk there now so there's that side done and I'm actually going to turn this up and just hand stitch that little bit down uh, but we are going to be stitching in the ditch to secure this piece but I've just got that little corner there so I'm going to repeat the process on the other side so we have we have the skirt we have the waistband we have the waistband facing waistband facing right side together with the waistband so that you can see two lines of stitching pin in place with the raw edges even stitch it down trim and turn that's the uh, zip finished so whilst we still have the zipper foot on we're going to close up the back seam of our skirt so with the zip closed you want to pin the remainder of your back seam together okay so once everything's pinned what you want to do is we're going to close up the back seam by sewing as close to this and overlapping by about a quarter of an inch and as I say get in as close as you can you won't be able to get right up to that line of stitching but you should be able to get a couple of millimeters away and we're going to sew for back stitch here and then sew the rest of the side uh, the back seam together we've got your regular zipper foot on this time you want to move your needle all the way over to the right as far as it will go and that will just enable you to get in nice and close to the line of stitching on your skirt hopefully you can see here but I've got the foot down and I'm just a couple about as I say a quarter of an inch up from where that that line of stitching finishes I've got the zipper tape all out of the way and I'm making sure that everything is lying flat under there as well so I'm going to sink my needle down back stitch here and then sew all the way down to the bottom of the seam now obviously the it's it's not going to be five eighths of an inch away from the center of the uh, foot because that's not where the needle is so for me what I like to do is I find one of the markings on my um, plate and I just use that as my guide to get an even hem the whole way down there you go so you can see overlapped probably by about quarter of an inch and about a quarter of an inch just less than that away so I'm going to trim these threads off and then I'm going to press this seam open the next thing that we need to do is uh, attach the inner waistband facing down to enclose all of these raw edges personally I like to stitch in the ditch which means that you need to fold the waistband facing onto the inside and then from the front you want to pin in the ditch 
and then just check that you have secured the waistband down. If you've de decided to turn your seam allowance under, you're going to want to make sure that you're definitely catching everything as you go go around. And you also, when you if you do decide to turn your seam allowance under rather than using bias binding, you're also going to want to do it by say half an inch instead of five eighths of an inch, just to give you that little bit of wiggle room to make sure that you definitely do catch everything as you are sewing. So I'm going to pin mine and then I will stitch in the ditch. Stitching in the ditch is, is exactly that. So we're, we're going, running a line of stitching in the ditch that's created by the seam which joins the waistband to the skirt. And when you sew, you kind of want to gently pull on the waistband and the skirt so that you can really sink your stitches into that ditch. And this is why we've pinned from the front to make sure that everything to make sure that the facing is definitely being caught. When you're starting and finishing this line of stitching, you also don't want to get right to the edge and interfere with the zipper teeth. So I'm going to back stitch about half an inch away from the edge of the skirt. And then my line of uh, stitching is hidden in the ditch. And then on the inside, the waistband facing is nicely secured down and all of the raw edges are hidden inside. So as I said, I'm going to just tuck that little bit of raw edge there up and hand tack the binding down in this particular area. You don't have to do that, it's just a preference of mine. And then we need to hem our skirt, but we're going to need to hang it up and make sure that any bias that there is in the fabric drops and does it thing. So we can level the hem out to then finish it off with bias binding. So to hem a circle skirt with bias binding, the first thing that you wanna do is you want your bias binding with the right side of the binding, so the bit that you can't see any raw edges, to the right side of the skirt. Now I have folded back about an inch of the bias binding to start and I have pinned it so that the raw edge of this folded piece meets the raw edge of the skirt. Personally, I only use one pin to get myself started. I then sit with the roll of bias binding in my lap and I reel out as much as I need as I'm going along. And what you wanna do is run your line of stitching in that crease there of the fold, keeping the raw edge of the binding up against the raw edge of the skirt. And you're gonna sew that the whole way round. The bias binding has been sewn to the edge of the skirt and this is the start and stop place so to start with I'd folded it back about an inch and sewn it down and then when I finished I've overlapped by again by about an inch so it just means that when we fold this fold this round like this it's all going to be encased and what I tend to do is kind of fold that under and stitch it all down by hand when I finish the hem. The first thing we need to do is actually press the hem. So we've got the bias binding on the wrong side and what we want to do this time is rather than fold it over in half we want to fold the entire thing to the inside of the skirt and we're going to press that so that you can see about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch of the uh, skirt fabric on the inside of the hem and we're going to do that the whole way round. Once you've pressed everything up the last thing that we need to do is finish off the hem by hand. So I've got my thread and you want the thread that's going to match the print that you're or the fabric that you're using the best and what you want to do is so I've, I've already started and I've anchored my, my thread on the seam allowance back here. So what you want to do is take, with everything flat, take a small bite of the main fabric. So there's a couple of threads there. And then you want to push your needle into the crease on the binding so that your needle is running along that crease and about an inch through and then just repeat and there are lots of different methods for hemming this kind of thing 
this is my preferred way of doing it. I find with a circle skirts the circumference of the hem which is here that you're turning up is greater than the outer edge of the circle once you've turned it up. So you don't want to sew your stitches too close together because you could end up with it puckering and it will take you twice as long which is why I use stitches that are around about an inch in be inch between. So into, I'm trying to do this in the viewfinder, and in, into the bias binding and out again along the crease. And then a small couple of threads from the main fabric and repeat and just go the whole way around. And then your skirt is finished, so you need to do some twirling. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments section down below. If you have a look at the description box down below, it will show you the calculator that I used, the fraction calculator that I used, and also the math that I used to get to the circumference that I needed. I really like how this skirt turned out. I love the fabric that I've used because it's slightly heavier than some of the crepes that I was using over the summer months. And also it looks like there's, it's a full circle, but it's really not. I double checked it by trying to lie it out flat and it is definitely three quarters of a circle. This one is also really good for directional prints because you need to cut three panels and the grain line for me was going right down the center of each panel. Then it works really well with directional prints which the one I'm using is. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!